Hi, welcome back to Ahead of the Curve. I'm your host, Dr. Megan Teed, and we are back for another casual curve combo with Carrie Green. Welcome back, Carrie. Hi, thanks for having me again. Chapter three, this is? Chapter three. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was funny because the first one we recorded, I feel like you're like, when's it coming out? Because we recorded <laughs> it and it was like two months until came out so yeah. it just came out last last week two weeks ago yeah mm -hmm. so yeah we've recorded another one since this one so um I'm loving these conversations getting good feedback from you all about um how you're enjoying them and liking them I think that they're very relatable obviously because we're in the same boat as you whether you have scoliosis or spinal fusion so um these are all just kind of things that we all deal with so every day <laughs> every day every day well Carrie I have been like on the edge of my seat to get an update about these curls <laughs> he right. was curls. so and I have a problem <laughs> <laughs> where I buy things and I have a whole big idea about it and then I do it once and then I forget so ah uh, okay so so it's literally you just forgetting mm -hmm. yep they are the heatless curl rope or whatever is under my bathroom sink collecting dust now all right, so I'm tasking you with yes. the next time we have a curve combo, <laughs> you are going to try this one more time, at least okay. one more time. <laughs> I, I'm literally writing it down right now. I have homework. What are some other things that you've bought that just you try it or you don't even try it and now they're collecting dust? Well, okay, so I buy a lot of clothes and I think uh -huh. about... I love clothes and I'm like, you know, so excited for all these outfits. And then I remember that I don't really go anywhere anymore. Like, <laughs> I, work, I work from home. I do my whole therapy coaching practice. Like this is my office right here. Mm -hmm. We're the same thing every day. So there's probably like 500 outfits that are also collecting dust in my closet. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, I kind of have a goal of purchasing less outfits and just focusing on staples, like having like a really nice white button down shirt and like one pair of real, like I have probably, this is embarrassing, probably 10 <laughs> pairs of jeans and I wear two of them. I have a black pair that are my favorite and then I have just like my blue jeans that I love and that's it. And my husband's like, what is this? Why do you have so many jeans? Yeah, it's we we're addicts. Mm -hmm. We are. Oh, uh, exercise gadgets I uh -huh. buy and I don't use them. Resistance yeah. bands, balls. Um, my gosh, straps. <laughs> Whatever you can think of. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. I have um. I mean, I try to use most of it. I mean, I have a PT practice, so I better be using the stuff yeah. on my clients and pulling them out. But I have these, it's called a uh, core, core first or something. And it's a Pilates reformer simulator type of thing. It's these stretchy rope things that have attachments. You can anchor it and do like feet and straps and mm -hmm. some of the arm work and stuff with them. They're pretty cool. Yeah. I can tell you, I probably have used them like five times. <laughs> so yeah, I'm guilty. Of that. Do you forget or do you, okay, mine is like, I get lazy too. I'm like, do I really want to get this thing out? Which would really take 20 seconds. Right. I think it's <laughs> laziness. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Like, getting it out and setting it up again, doesn't take that long, but mm -hmm. I'm all about efficiency. And you want to hear the funniest thing that my husband purchased recently? Yeah. Long... 
um what is it called it's like a it's a neck thing and you put it around put it around the top of your head uh-huh it, this is gonna sound crazy to is listen it like to. a laser light no no it's like oh, okay, okay. It's, it's like a helmet almost and it has like a cord, a bungee cord and you put it inside a door it holds it in place oh like a traction thing strengthen your neck by going like oh. this oh so it's a sh- neck strength <laughs> yeah it looks wild and it looks dangerous and he doesn't use it ever I used it like twice and I was like you look ridiculous it's this it's like a big black helmet uh-huh and then it anchors into like the top of the door or the side like, uh like- straight ahead so you're like kind of it's like a cord and you're trying to like pull your head back and I'm like I don't know this doesn't look like it's for beginners <laughs> This is your neck we're messing with here. Can you please be careful? He's like, I'm fine. <laughs> That's so funny. We got to get the name of it. I mean, I really don't think you need much more than just like gravity to strengthen your neck, but that's my... There's a cheaper way. <laughs> There's a better way. <laughs> yeah. Also, again, more efficient way than connecting yourself to a helmet and a door. <laughs> a strap. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. See, so guys, guys have it too. They've got a problem as well. Yeah, we do. <laughs> My husband's pretty good. I think he ha- just has a problem with like getting rid of stuff. I feel mm. that, especially notes from his. He's a golf professional and director of golf at a course, local course. And if some like somebody writes him a nice note on paper or in a card. It just sits on the table and I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this pile, move this whole pile somewhere else. And, you know, it just sits there. Oh, he's sentimental. He is sentimental. Yeah, that's so sweet. It is sweet. Yes. I think that's, you know, that's one of his love languages. So (laughs) He he probably has notes from like middle school, even then. How far back does it go? Um, <laughs> well, his mother dropped off some things <laughs> a couple months ago, and I was like, I cannot believe you have saved these things. That's amazing. A note from like an elementary school teacher or something. So yeah, we um we have some things we need to sort through. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, man. So speaking of moms. Mm -hmm. I had a a question from somebody on Instagram a couple weeks ago who was concerned about um, passing on her scoliosis to her child. And, you know, it's a really common fear and concern for people um, because there is a pretty strong genetic link to it, but it's not a given if like I have scoliosis, I would pass it on to my daughter, son. Uh, And I can't remember, do you have any family members that have scoliosis? Yeah, my mom has it. um, Even though it's super, super, super mild, she doesn't have like a a big S curve. Hers is weird. (laughs) This is so funny. We were looking at her x-rays recently, like trying to figure out what what is going on. But she's got like a bunch of like little random curves. Um, so she does have it. It's a very unusual because, you mm-hmm. know, there's so many like similarities and like patterns to curves. But anyway, she does have it. Um, it's a different curve, but she also has uh, osteoporosis too. We just found out as okay. well. Yeah. 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 Is that the only person in your family that you know about that has it? or had it like any grandparents or aunts that I know of yeah. it's totally possible yeah there's more yeah yeah so my mom does not have it but my great-grandmother apparently had it and hers was hers presented more like a kyphosis so mm-hmm. you know more of the rounded shoulder type of scoliosis or curve um but yeah, I, when, when I have these conversations with people, it's like, 
that I don't think that it's enough of a reason to not have children, um, mm-hmm. fear of passing it on. But, you know, obviously that's my personal belief and my experience with scoliosis has been different than other people. Um, and also I think the fact that you do have it, um, as a mother, you will be more on the lookout for the signs and symptoms in your children and pick up on it much more quickly, get things addressed so that it doesn't turn into, you know, more of a significant curve or painful curve. But what are are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I definitely would, you know, if I was to have a child right now, I would be concerned of course. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's so much, you you know, you can do if you know what to look for. And so my sister, she actually just had a baby. Well, she's like one now, Mm -hmm. but, um, just as an example, like she had a bunch of problems with like tongue tie and, uh, like neurological, not like delays, but there's some, some dysregulation with her nervous system and her muscles are, um, developing at like a different rate point being like she's done a lot of things for her already like physical therapy and like craniosacral massage and I think that it's possible that I even could have had a lot of that going on when I was younger and just nobody knew right what to even look out for yeah so maybe you know with all of this like she'll be maybe she'll be okay and it will be a different outcome you know Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah It's definitely a interesting conversation. And, you know, if, if having children is some, something that you're passionate about and, you know, you really desire that for your life, um, I would not let that factor impact whether or not that you have children, because it's possible that, you know, it's not even an issue. So percent and we are living amazing lives like nothing is wrong you know it's yeah. not a, it's yeah. not really uh it doesn't necessarily a debilitating you know disease or anything like that like we can all have scoliosis and live kick-ass lives as long yeah. as we are taking care of it and we know what to do so I just think that do what you want and knowledge is power and just make sure you're like checking the boxes mm-hmm. yeah Um, there's a, a girl that I, or a doctor that I just started following on Instagram. Her name is Dr. Cassie Huckabee. Um, I might be saying that wrong, but that's what it looks like. Um, and she talks a lot about healing and, um, diagnoses and how, when we associate so strongly with a diagnosis, it actually prevents us from being able to heal. And, um, you know, I, I w- I've been trying to internalize that a lot this past week. And I think with scoliosis, it can be harder because it's so visible to us mm-hmm. um, that there is something going on in our body, um, to separate ourselves from that diagnosis and focus on, you know, what, what is something that I'm not doing right now because because I'm waiting to be healed of my scoliosis, or I'm waiting until like this particular moment in time to live my life. Like, what am I not doing right now? And waiting for the day when, you know, I'm not having pain or my my back is straight, you know, this, that, or the other. I I think that that is like something hard to wrap your mind around, but I think it's also really important. Yeah. Right. And then you're like waiting and that day never comes. And Mm -hmm. yeah, something that's helped me so much. Cause like you said, when I was younger, I used to identify with it in a very, very negative way. Like the universe is unfair. This is, you're deformed, you're different. Your body's like broken. It's never going to get better. And that was just like, so all consuming. And fast forward to now, one thing that I think about a lot is like, wow, look how well you like take care of your body. Would you be taking care of your body so 
like diligently, you know, like work out all the time. I eat healthy. Like, would I be doing all of this if it wasn't for scoliosis? So I, it's just, you know, a totally different perspective. And I, tr I really do believe that, right? Like we are yeah. Yeah. forced in a way to think about our body all the time, but that doesn't have to be a negative. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really great perspective. Um, and I think that it can be really helpful for people to, to reframe, <laughs> yeah, reframe what's going on in your life so that it's not such a negative and, uh, compressive thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So have you gone swimsuit shopping? <laughs> I haven't yet this year. Really shifting gears here. <laughs> I so my swimsuit shoot, my swimsuit shopping will be like ordering ten on Cupshe, and then I'll put <laughs> them all on and <laughs> see which ones. Okay, so Cupshe into the store. Yeah, <laughs> my experience with Cupshe was not positive one. Okay, tell me. And it's been a long time since I've ordered from them because of this experience. But when I ordered, you could not buy a different size top from the bottom. They had to be the same size. So I'm a very different size <laughs> from my top and my bottom. And I ordered a large for my top and I had to order a large for my bottom. And I have these like, you know granny panties that are all <laughs> saggy at my butt and just falling off if they would get wet and anyway ever since then cup she has not been something I've even they're off your list okay I will I am not gonna buy them anymore that's so rude <laughs> that's so rude of them sometimes, I mean, sometimes you get them and they're the seams are messed up that's the one thing I hate you know so it's like you get there's one perfect bathing suit and then the next one you get and you're like boob is like coming out yeah <laughs> not even yeah I've definitely have had that with other things like other brands probably stuff I've ordered from Amazon or something like that because Amazon's kind of similar where it's like yeah. what what is this material probably made of that's not great for my body <laughs> totally not yeah they're like <laughs> flammable dish rags <laughs> yeah no that's yeah. true that's true like yeah I, I got these little tennis outfits that um I like to wear and they're like tennis slash golf outfits and I got a few from Amazon and the material is questionable like see girl no it's just like it's you can yeah. <laughs> tell yeah. not very breathable it's just yeah. Yeah. I will say when you invest in a good bathing suit, which I don't do often, but when you do, you're like, Ooh, I look so good. Yeah. I, <laughs> it I does know. Make a difference. Totally. The material, the cut of it, you know, uh, I have you ever heard of Albion fit? Hmm, no. So <laughs> They are swimsuit and athleisure wear company. I think they're all online. I don't know. Because I need that. <laughs> yeah. It's Albion, A-L-B-I-O-N, Fit. Okay. And they have some of the best swimsuits that, but they're an investment. I mean, it's not like a cheap, cheap little target swimsuit I really like them um they have two pieces and then they have these one pieces that kind of look like a two-piece where they have like a cool little accent on it like a zipper and then this cute little bow where the back is open anyway so fun <laughs> yeah I love them and anyway I'm I'm in the mode of okay it's it's around that time where I want to look for a couple of new swimsuits because I, I mean we both live somewhere really hot yeah and I spend a lot of time at the pool I don't know about you I do yeah and I also want to get so can you like 
you can exercise in those swimsuits then obviously mm -hmm. yeah yeah so when I'm like really feeling ambitious I run from my house to the beach and I always think oh my gosh I wish I had a suit that I could run in and then oh, dive yeah. and then run back home so you just put me on to something <laughs> I like that yeah because I have the the swimsuits the tops are pretty supportive too like it's like I mean, it's not a sports bra, it's not tight like that, but it has pretty good coverage, some of them. So you could wear that and run and jump in the water. Yeah, I haven't really been loving sports bras lately because I'm getting more sensitive to, and I know you like talk about this all the time, the tightness. Yeah. I can't mm -hmm. live, I cannot live with the tightness. I can't deal. No, <laughs> I know. I'm So Car Carrie's talking about... um I, I've talked about this a few times in my stories. I feel like I just keep talking about Instagram, but also, <laughs> uh, I feel like I need to get a life. Um, <laughs> so, um, I went for a run the other day and I wore one of my old sports bras and I have a bigger chest. So um, my, my theory when I used to buy my sports bras was like, I'll just size down so that it'll be more compressive and it won't be as much, you know, movement happening when I run. And I wore, I don't know if my rib cage has expanded from all of the scully breathing I've been doing. But oh, maybe. Wait, I, I yeah. Cause all my bras are too tight now. And I'm like, am I getting more chesty or are they, are the bras shrinking? Like what is going on? I think it's from doing expansive breathing, which makes sense because you yeah. can, you know, it, that's the whole point of it. Um, yeah. So I went for a run and I was just like holding on to the band, pulling it away from my body. Oh my gosh. I'm just so done with bras. Mm -hmm. like that. I can't, it completely ruined my run and made yeah. me show the breath. So yeah, you're inspiring me to go throw all of mine out right now. <laughs> like it's not gonna get better they do not need yeah. to exist in this household anymore <laughs> yeah yeah I I found these uh good ones at Dick's they're the Kalia brand and uh the the bottom of the sports bra which is my most irritating spot it's like a softer thicker material mm -hmm. that goes around the band so it's still supportive but it's a lot more comfortable at your rib cage yeah okay I need to get one of those yeah, yeah. just yeah. promoting all these people that right like we're not we're not, not sponsored <laughs> we're not sponsored but we could be yeah if you want to sponsor us <laughs> yeah feel that. free <laughs> what, what, there? Else? what other brands can we talk about <laughs> <laughs> what brand do I want Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, well, okay. So, speaking of swimsuits, hot tip for everyone don't make this mistake. Don't make this mistake, please. If you buy a uh, one that ties in the back, mm -hmm. when, uh, some of the bikinis have like the tie is really thick. Yeah. So, I made that mistake recently and I bought a bunch like that. And it, like, especially if you have a fusion, it digs into your fusion. Oh, think of it when I was like trying them on. Now they're all like sitting in there. I'm never gonna wear them. It's the most uncomfortable, yeah, feeling. So just avoid that. That's avoid a good. That's, I would not think about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't and wear. I think about it until it was way too late, and I was like trapped at the pool. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, even just laying on your even if you don't have scoliosis, I don't really feel like the knot is very comfortable to lay on. But then when you add in like the, the rotation of the curve and then the, yeah, not comfortable. Not at all. Oh, but one last tip, hmm. you know, what really helps at the pool. This is what I've been doing. I take my actual couch pillows <laughs> to uh -huh. the pool and I just, I lay on them. Instead of oh. like trying to endlessly like prop up your spine, yeah. 
towels or whatever. I just take the freaking decor pillow pillows and I'm sitting at the pool with the That's awesome. <laughs> so you just put that on the, the pool chair? Yeah. Okay. So like a throw pillow. Yeah, basically. I'm like envisioning like you just toting these huge <laughs> what you're envisioning is exactly what's happening. I am walking out there holding a pillow from my couch. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I actually can relate to that. Because I, yeah, I mean, I usually just kind of roll up my beach towel strategically in certain spots. Like I'll still be laying on it, but I'll roll up the side and put it at my prominence and I think I I like what you're talking about here. Try it. Try it. Report back. <laughs> I will. I will. It's uh, it's getting hot. Yeah, we, we're in nineties right now. Oh, you, it's not even like of... this year. What? I don't think it's possible. Is. Holy moly! I mean, you're like eight hours south of me. Eighty nine. Okay. You're okay. close. You're close. You're close. <laughs> yeah so um do you want to play that game before mm -hmm. we move up? yeah let's play that game all right so I'm gonna say three fears rapid fire that I've collected by hearing something somewhere probably Instagram <laughs> and and you you say yes or no yes it's okay or no it's not okay Okay. All right. All right. Fear number one: vibration plate with a fusion. Yes is okay. Okay. And gosh, I just bought one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dead hang with a fusion. Ugh. I'm kind of yeah. in between there. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm gonna say no. Okay. Um because I have personal experience to share about that. Mm. Um, so I don't have a fusion, but I have scoliosis and I have been trying to work on my grip strength and just playing around with dead hangs to see like, because that's something that we're told that we sh shouldn't do. And I'm just playing around and seeing what my body's capable of. And I did one, I was trying to work up to like two minutes, which I should not have jumped to that. Um, and I was like, oh, that's great. And then the next day I woke up and I was like, I can't take a deep breath. My, my ribs were so sore. I mean, I was, I felt really rotated and I was like, what did I do? And I like could not remember that I did these stupid dead hangs. And, um, you know, my, my caution with that is a few things. When, when you are just purely hanging and you're not engaging your muscles at all, you're purely resting on your joints and your ligaments. So with a fusion, and with scoliosis, you have these little transition zones that like to move a lot. And when you do a dead hang, you don't really have that support at that area. So it can cause shiftiness, crankiness to happen. So I would say continue to use muscle engagement at least a little bit while you're doing those um, and not just fully dead hang okay perfect all right that's off the list <laughs> none of that <laughs> yeah it's okay to say no <laughs> I know but I also like I have such a sensitivity to that where you know yeah there, there's a lot that's that we're told not to do and we totally can do so yeah 100 percent. all right this is the last one so myofascial massage with a ball on the floor versus the wall. Can you, is it too much on the floor? Where are you massaging? Just like, um, 
let's say your back, just your back. And what kind of ball? <laughs> uh, the the pink one. The <laughs> pink? What is the pink one? <laughs> I'm looking around to see if I have it. The is it like a firm ball? Is it a soft ball? Is it? A... It's uh okay. It's softer than a lacrosse ball. Mm -hmm. It's called a myofascial ball. It's like this. It's a, this big. Okay, so it's probably like the yoga tune-up balls. So there's a little bit of a give to it, but a little bit of a give. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I would say. It depends on where you're massaging. Um, we we tend to just go so aggressively. I I think that against the wall is best yeah. for, for that. Um, with spinal fusion, without spinal fusion, it doesn't matter. Right. right. And you know, we we go crazy with oh my gosh, my hip flexors are so tight. So let's lay over a lacrosse ball. Well, you have all sorts of soft organs that lay below that, that you can actually bruise and affect by yeah. massaging with too firm of a ball. Um, even in your, your lumbar spine as well, your kidneys are back there. So meet your body with the amount of firmness that you're massaging. So if you are like down in the leg, you can have much more firm of a ball because you don't have organs, visceral organs that lay below there. Okay. Uh, yes. So yeah, that's my okay. Idea. Wait, I thought of a bonus. You just said that. So what about a theragun? <laughs> oh God. No. <laughs> no theraguns. Back, not on your back. That would be too much. Ooh. Yeah. No, no theraguns around your back, your neck, your upper traps. Yeah. Uh, legs fine okay yeah. arms fine I mean yeah. I just yeah I, I'm not a fan of them they make my skin it like I just want to scratch the crap out of my skin it makes me like super itchy I wonder why that would be it's just too much stimulation for me yeah. <laughs> I'm getting itchy <laughs> and stand it your, your nerves are like, ah, leave me alone. Ah, yeah. They're like, I don't like this at all. So that was fun. You eased my fears. Even if you say don't do something, then I still feel better because I'm like not trying to figure it out myself. So that still helps. Yeah. 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 I like those questions. They're good ones. I was going to say, I thought I was going to say yes for all of them. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Turns out. Turns out. Your foods. Yeah, some of them <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, and even when you use the Theragun near, like on your upper traps, like a lot of people do, you can give yourself vertigo. Oh. Because it's so much vibration, it actually vibrates like your whole. Your, your autonomic nervous system. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even get me started. Don't, <laughs> don't disrupt your vagus nerve with. Well, your it's your vagus nerve. It's your little crystals that are in your ear that float around. They can kind of get knocked into a different spot. I mean, yeah, we use that as a treatment for vertigo. It's not a theragun, but it's like a little vibration tool that we put at the back of the ear mm -hmm. to help. You know, when you're you are in a correct position to reposition those crystals, the vibration actually can be helpful, but yeah, it could be pretty, pretty. Wait, yeah. Okay. The next time we meet in chapter four, can you remind us to talk about crystals? Sure. So talk about this. Yeah. So <laughs> I call them crystals because it's just easier, but they're the scientific name for them is otoconia. Okay. Um, so they, they just kind of, they float around in the different canals in your ears and they can get into the incorrect canal and give you terrible vertigo. I've had it before and it's huh. awful. Yeah. I'm just curious because I feel like I might have had that once. I don't have it right now, but I've had weird like ear things. Yeah. So. Yeah, we can totally talk about that next yeah. time. <laughs> Chapter four, ear mystery solved. 
Yes. <laughs> Talents and yeah, vestibular stuff we could talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, mm-hmm. thank you again for tuning in to another Curve Combo. And thanks for coming, Carrie. Great to have you again. So happy to be here. See you on chapter four. See you in chapter four. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you.